again, I've been asked to do a series of videos about acoustics and sound waves. I think that's a pretty good idea. So I'm going to start with sound waves. Sound waves are the basics of acoustics. If you don't know how a sound wave works, the rest of acoustics isn't going to make much sense to you. So we're going to start there. Um, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm pretty much going to describe some sound waves. I'm going to show some demonstrations. I'm going to stay away from the math for right now. Um, Let's talk about what a sound wave is doing right now. My voice, my, my vocal cords, are making a pressure wave come through the air that has information encoded in it. That's what you're listening to right now. And if you want to see what's, think about what's happening, the pressure waves are now going through the air from my voice. They're going to that microphone up there on the camera I'm talking to, and they're going onto the memory card of the camera. They're being changed from analog to digital to be stored. That digital information is eventually going to wind up on the YouTube servers. And when you listen to it, you're going to pull that digital information back, turn it back into analog on your sound card on your computer, send it through your speakers, and speakers are going to reproduce the sound waves I'm making right now. That's a sound wave. All right, for air to make, there, there'd be sound waves in air, you have to be able to talk about the mass of the air and the stiffness of the air or the compressibility of the air. Does air have mass? Well, here's an experiment. I got a balloon here. Okay, I don't know what they made this balloon out of. This is all the more air I can get in it, so I'm gonna, hopefully this will work. Um, if air has mass, then the elastic surface of this balloon should squeeze the air out the back when I let it go. And if F still equals MA, then the air accelerating out the back is gonna make a force that way and it's gonna go somewhere. Wow, okay, there you go, that worked. So air must have mass. Well, it does. It has is a uh, density of 1.233 kilograms per cubic meter at sea level on a standard day. So that means that a cube of air about that big, a cube, weighs 1.2 more or less kilograms. So that's like two and a half pounds if you want to think about it that way. In more uh, physical terms, that means a cube of air that big weighs about as much as a small textbook. Okay? You don't think of that little that air weighing that much, but it does. Okay? The other one, is there such a thing as uh, compressible compressibility in air? Well, sure. Yeah, of course there is. The air in your tires of your car or your bicycle has been compressed to get in there. In fact, the way you tell how much air is in there is you look at the little pressure gauge and it tells you. I'm afraid I don't know this in, in uh, metric numbers. I should, but I don't. Um, the air in the tires of my car is supposed to be about 40 PSI, so not quite three atmospheres, so 250 kilopascals, something like that. Um, so we know air has mass. We know air has stiffness. Now here's the thing. A wave is propagating through the air when I talk and the microphone picks it up. Does that mean the air is moving? No, it doesn't. The air doesn't move, but a wave goes through it. This is the cool thing about waves. They transfer energy. They transfer information if we decide to encode that in a wave, but they don't, you're not transmitting mass. There's no mass flow between me and the microphone. Well, Hmm, how do I think about that? Okay, here's an experiment. There's a, I don't know what they call this in other countries in, in the U.S. This little giz here is called a slinky, okay? And it's just a really weak tension spring. I had a bunch of these when I was a kid, and they're great fun to play with. Give one of these to any little kid. They don't need any instructions. They'll, they'll figure out what to do. You can get them to go down steps, and you can do this. Turns out a slinky is a great way to explain how wave propagation works. All right, so I'm gonna pause right here. Let's go out in the hallway and do a wave propagation experiment. All right, here we go. We're gonna try this with a slinky, okay? And the, the big idea here is that we're gonna get a wave moving laterally through the slinky, but the slinky itself isn't gonna be moving along its axis this way or back that way. So let's try this, okay? If I pull this back, and I'm going to help her on the other end, and you can see my hand right there. I'm going to send a little pulse through it. Can you see the wave come back? Okay, that's a bending wave. Oh, that didn't work too well. That's a bending wave going through the slinky. There's another one. That's a good one. And one more time. Okay, so the big idea here is that this, the wave propagated through the slinky 
energy propagated through the slinky even though the slinky itself didn't really move that much. Okay, so the slinky experiment out in the hallway um, shows how a wave can propagate even though mass doesn't propagate. Energy went through that slinky and the wave went through that slinky carrying that energy, but the slinky itself didn't bounce back and forth. Now, that's not a perfect explanation because that's not really a compression wave. That's something closer to what we call a bending wave. Sound is a compression wave. All right? We'll tell you a little more about the difference between bending and compression waves um, in, a, in a later video. I don't want to stack too much stuff on this one. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about now is how fast does sound propagate? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a finite speed, right? You know, we've, we've all seen something happen, you know, a, a, a lightning bolt hit, and you hear it later. That means the speed of light is a lot faster than the speed of sound. Well, it is. Um, in a dis uh, inside a room, like the distance from here to the microphone on this uh, uh, camera, it's essentially instantaneous. But over long distances, it really isn't. Okay, so here's the speed of sound in air. Okay, now we use the word, the letter C for the sp this, uh, speed. C is, uh, stands for the Latin word celeritas. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, which means velocity. Okay, so speed of sound in air is the square root of gamma times P over rho. Now I told you I wasn't going to get into too much of the math, but hopefully this isn't, this, this, this doesn't violate that, at least not in spirit. Okay, so if you work out the numbers here, there's pressure density, 1.23 uh, kilograms per cubic meter at sea level on a standard day, blah, blah, blah. If you're on top of uh, the, the uh, Peruvian Andes, this is going to be down quite a ways, and this might well be as well. This is a gas constant. For diatomic gases, it's 1.4. Okay, and so air is mostly diatomic nitrogen with a bunch of diatomic oxygen in it. By the time you get to those two, you're up to 98 point something percent. So we can count that as 1.4, and this is the speed of sound, again, at sea level, ideal uh, uh, conditions and all that kind of things. 343 meters a second, okay? That's really not very fast, okay? So um, if you're trying to go a kilometer at the speed of sound, it's going to take on the neighborhood of three seconds, right? Something like that. Now, what about the speed of sound in water? That's the other one that you'll, if there's any two you want to know, it's these two. All right, this is a lot faster. It's about 4.2, 4.3 times the speed of sound in air. So it's fast, but it's still not that fast. Let's say, now imagine you're watching like a submarine movie, Hunt for Red October, one of the best. Um, and you have two submarines that are 1.5 kilometers apart, 1,500 meters apart and one of them sends out a ping, a sonar pulse, which is a pressure wave through the air, just like a sound wave. And what the, the, what the submarine is trying to do is bounce that off the tar of the other submarine and here, listen for the reflection. Figure out how long it takes for the reflection to come back and sort of what direction it came from. Now you know where the other guy is. So if you send out a ping to a target that's 1,500 meters away, it has to go out and come back. It's going to take two seconds. Ping, 1,001, 1,002, there's the response, okay? So it takes a noticeable amount of time over any reasonable distance for sound to tra uh, uh, traverse through water. Now, just from a, an aside, if two submarines are chasing each other and they are 1,500 meters apart, something is desperately, desperately wrong, okay? 10,000 meters is probably closer to the right answer. I'm not really sure, so go talk to somebody who knows. But if they're that close, something's wrong, okay? So anyway, speed of sound in water, uh, about 4.3, I think, 4.2 times the speed of sound in air, okay? This, is, this comes from the item, uh, fundamental laws of how gases work. These are compressive waves going through either air or water, so they're both sound. This is how whales talk to each other, pretty much. Okay, so there you have it. Beginnings of sound waves, okay? We know it's a pressure wave. We know that the medium is not moving even though the energy is going through the medium, which is pretty handy, that, make, that makes that work. And uh, next time, we'll start talking about what resonant frequencies are and the difference between uh, bending waves and compression waves. So I hope that helps, and I'll talk to you next time.